My name is Alec Thompson and I'm a high school senior at the Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics. OSSM is a public boarding school that is both funded by the government and by many private donors. It hosts a rigorous two-year academic program that is open to all of Oklahoma's um, jun rising juniors throughout its 77 counties. On average, about 350 hopeful applicants apply each year, and only 75 are actually admitted, uh, with an even smaller amount being able to participate for the whole two-year program. I want to say, due to my affiliation with OSSM, I'm very honored to be able to participate in the first annual online undergraduate conference. The main purpose of this presentation is to show the influence of nurture on an individual's psychological development throughout that individual's life. And a few minor points are to express my concerns and complaints on the various techniques and experiments that are used to measure the efficacy of genetic inheritance or the um, effectiveness of the environmental stimuli on affecting an individual's psychology. So there are many factors that can affect an individual's psychology, but they all always fall into the two basic categories of nature and nurture. Nature deals with the individual's genes and the gene's heredity, and nurture deals with the person's ability to adapt or cope with the various environmental stimuli. The nature versus nurture debate began in the late 1860s with a British scientist named Sir Francis Galton. At this time, his cousin, Charles Darwin, just came out with his theory of natural selection. This was a major influencer to Galton's theory of nature versus nurture. Galton understood the na theory of natural selection quite well. He knew that the organism with the best genetics would pass on its genes to the next generation, and the organism with the worst genetics would eventually die out. But for some reason, he started thinking a more abstract view. He was thinking of concepts like an individual's wealth, an individual's IQ, an individual's social standing. And he saw that even though a lot had to do with a person's relation with who they inherited it from, the object, the, the wealth, the IQ, or the social standing was itself was not passed to the genes. His only explanation for this were environmental factors. Let me elaborate a little more. Um, I'll admit that IQ has a lot to do with a person's genetics, but one can easily influence or raise their IQ by picking up a book and reading it or going to a class and learning. Um, let's use wealth as another example. Usually when an elder dies, the elder passes on his money to the next generation. Though the next generation is, is related to the elder genetically, the money itself is not passed on through the genes. It's passed on through environmental means. Though uncommon then, it's not, un it's not uncommon now to actually inherit money from a family friend or um, a very close friend. Galton saw that these inheritances weren't caused by the passing on of genes, but by the passing on of environmental factors. Gaunt continued to apply his experiments to um, a random potpourri of things, like the efficacy of prayer or how well one slept at night, etc. This brought a whole new side to genetics. Was this caused by nature or was this caused by nurture? Back then, it was thought that nurture was just some figment of an old man's mind. But, but as time progressed, nurture grew in power and nature weakened, and then and then it switched again, but now it's properly believed that nature and nurture both contribute to one's psychological development. With, with all this argument between which one exists and which one doesn't, thus began the nature versus nurture debate. Scientists have been arguing that things like schizophrenia were, in were caused by environmental factors and then it would change to natural factors. Various things like this would be, would be argued between being influenced by the person's genetics or a, or a person's environmental stimuli, certain diseases or um, psychological um, defects were thought to be caused by natural causes. But now some of them are actually proved to be caused by an environmental stimuli. So in order to put the terms of the nature versus nurture debate into a simpler meaning, I'll use a quote from one of my sources. She says, the debate primarily deals with the significance of one's innate qualities, nature, versus the importance of one's personal experience, nurture, in determining the variances in both behavioral and personal traits. 
I like this quote because it's one of the few sources I found to use to differentiate between the two terms of behavior and personality. A lot of the sources I found um, use them almost synonymously, and even though they have a similar meaning, um, depending on what kind of study is done on them, can completely affect the outcome of the experiment in a negative sense. So I was forced to um, differentiate between the two terms of behavior and personality. The definition I came up for behavior is a habit that is induced from learning what is and what is not acceptable in a certain society or culture. Um, therefore, it's, it's the way a person acts like when they're going out to dinner or when they leave the house. They're acting within the norms of society. And with the norms of society being almost constant throughout uh, certain regions, and most behavioral studies are done on a regional and not a national setting, you can see a major fault in experiment and behavioral experiments. The other term I derived, the other term personality, I describe it as the presentation of action based on the unique internal thought process that is different in each individual. So an action that is caused by a person's um, personality is not always within the, storm, the norms of behavior. So here's a very extreme example. Someone um, makes you angry. One person would be able to just blow it off and live on with their life. The other person would end up having a vendetta and probably want the other person's life. So that's the major difference between the two terms are the bound of society. Um, also, with behavior being almost similar in every region, by doing a behavioral study on a region, you won't be able to tell between the genetic influence or the environmental stimuli. In order to support my claim that nurture has a larger influence on an individual's psychological development, I'll use a quote from Galton himself. He says that, um, nurture acts before birth in every stage of the embryonic and pre-embryonic existence, causing the potential faculties at the time of birth to be in some effect a nurture. So what he's saying is, whatever happens to the baby while it is inside the womb will affect its psychology, its personality, the way it acts outside of the womb and with the rest of the world. So, for example, um, say the mother abuses certain drugs and is an alcoholic. That's going to affect the both the f mental and the physical development of the child. Um, here's a hypothetical example. Um, so during a family's pregnancy, the father is present throughout the whole nine months. When the child is born, the baby will be comfortable with the father because the baby recognizes the father's voice and the father's smell and the father's touch. Whereas if the father was forced to be absent during the nine months, then the baby will be, un will be wary and probably throw tantrums being, when being held by the father. This is also true that most babies stop crying whenever they are wrapped tightly in a blanket because the tightness of the blanket reminds them of what they experienced within the womb of the mother. Some scientists and researchers even argue that the way the parent treats the child will affect its um, psych psychology as the child grows up. Um, Freud even said that Two parents can cause untold reactions to a young child by just being present. And it is universal. Even the most careful parents can and will cause this reaction. Um, Hillary Clinton even uses this idea in her book, It Takes a Village. She says parents who care for their babies in a loving, responsive way tend to have babies who are securely attached to them and who develop into a self-confident, friendly child. Parents who provide firm but not rigid limits to their child to their children have children who are less likely to get in trouble, and parents who fail to provide their child with a home that contains both a mother and father have children who are more likely to fail in some way in their adult lives. That, I'll admit, is a big stretch, but the idea is true. Mostly in the early years of a child's life, um, the child is not exposed to an external environment that is not controlled by the parents and mostly parents raise their children to have the same morals and social standards that they hold. So the lack of external influence and external environmental influence, there can be no discrepancy between the genetic influence and the environmental influence. If I hadn't mentioned earlier, the whenever these experiments studying the personality and behavior are done, 
similarities between the two individuals um, means that it is genetic inheritance, and differences mean that it is in the environmental influence. With, so with the children having similar genes and the parents raising them to have the same beliefs, there can be no way to differentiate between the two. So with all the things being similar, the, some of the things that could be the environmental influence are being given to nature. The only remedy for this is to um, do studies on children who have been able to grow outside of the family at a young age, or that being very unlikely, that um, wait until adolescence. Um, adolescence is a part in a person's life where both major physical and psychological changes are happening in the body. It's also the point where the child gains more freedom from the parents and can finally um, be influenced from the external environment. The adolescent's external environment can include um, school, his friends, um, job. Um, these all will affect his psychology, and this is the prime time to to do a study on um, personality sim similarities and differences. So you can measure the moral, the personality of the adolescent and compare it with the personality of the parent and and then the influences will, been, will then be equally distributed between, between nature and nurture. So as the uh, adolescent finally reaches adulthood, um, this is when the gen the nature part of the argument finally loses most of its power because the genes that the individual had at birth are still with the individual and um, but the external environment is constantly changing and thus it constantly affects the individual's psychology so a change the change from high school to college or um, starting a family a change in job, pay grade, um, you move to a new location, all affect the psychology, whereas your, whereas your genes are just, are still the same. Since the genes and nature are with you since the beginning, nurture just has the whole span of life to influence one's psychology. Also, in the environment of nurture, there are things called microenvironments. Um, they are just smaller portions of the big environment. So you have uh, the family environment, but then you ha also have your individual influences from your mother, your father, your siblings, your pets, your um, your relatives. And also you have the your friend environment, but then you have the each separate individual influences from friend, your best friend, your enemy, your and so forth. And all these influences will build up on top of each other, causing your psychology to be affected by so many, on so many different fronts. Whereas nature, again, just, whereas nature, again, just starts at the beginning and develops throughout the first 20 years of your life and it ends its course. So a uh, review is, Nurture acts during two of the major two of the major developmental stages of nature, um, the embryonic and the adolescent stages of the individual. And nurture also has a larger span of influence than nature does. Those are the three major arguments. Um, the complaints are my, the complaints that I that I touched on were the studies of behavior done on a regional and not a national setting, and um, the synonymous use of behavior and personality, as well as the it's being done on the personalities of young children and their parents. Um, thank you for letting me participate in this conference. It was a really great experience, and it was really tough. Thank you to everyone who helped in the process of this paper and presentation, and. I'm looking forward to your questions and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability.